Have you ever paused and looked back at your life, asking yourself, is this still what I want? By the time we reach 70, life has taught us many lessons, filled us with dreams, and sometimes left us with burdens we no longer need to carry. It's like having an overpacked bag that we've carried for years. Some things are useful, but others are just weighing us down. But what if we could let go of some of that weight and live more freely? As we age, it's not just about adding more years. It's about adding more meaning to those years. There are beliefs, roles and habits that once made sense, but now hold us back. Imagine being able to shed these unnecessary burdens and truly enjoy the simplicity of living. Are you curious to know what things you can let go of to live a lighter, happier life after 70? In this script, we're exploring nine things that often no longer make sense as we grow older. These things may have served you well in the past, but now they might be stopping you from experiencing peace, joy, and fulfillment. So, what's one thing you've been holding on to for too long? Is it still worth keeping? Or could letting it go bring you more freedom? If you find this journey inspiring, show some love by liking the video and commenting with a 2. If you think there's something we can improve, drop a heart and a 7 in the comments below. 1. Letting go of the need to be useful to everyone. For much of our lives, we are driven by a simple but powerful belief. Our value is measured by how useful we are to others. It's a lesson that starts early. As children, we are praised for helping out, and as adults, we find meaning in being good parents, supportive partners, and reliable friends. We take on these roles naturally, believing that if we're not constantly helping, we're somehow falling short. But is this belief still serving us, or has it become a heavy burden as we age? By the time we reach 70, it's time to ask an important question. Do we still need to be useful to everyone? We have spent years giving to others, whether to family, friends, or the community, and this has defined much of our identity. But the reality is, our worth does not depend on how many people we help or how much we sacrifice. It's okay to pause, step back, and set boundaries. Imagine this. If you could say no to one more request today, how much more time would you have for yourself? How much more peace could you experience? The constant need to be useful often leaves us feeling drained and overlooked. It's time to shift our focus from constantly giving to others to giving a little more to ourselves. It's not selfish, it's necessary. This doesn't mean we stop caring for others. It means we start caring for ourselves as well. Those who truly love us don't value us only for what we do, they value us for who we are. By letting go of this need to always be useful, we open up space for personal peace and the pleasure of simply being. So, what's one thing you can say no to today, not because you don't care, but because you care enough to protect your well-being. 2. The Fear of Growing Old From a young age, society teaches us to see aging as something to fear. We're told that getting older means losing vitality, relevance, and even beauty. We see advertisements celebrating youth, and it creates a mindset that getting older is all about loss. But let's pause for a moment. What if growing old wasn't something to be feared, but rather a privilege to be embraced? Reaching 70 is not about what you're losing. It's about everything you've gained over the years, wisdom, strength, and a deeper understanding of life. Each wrinkle, every gray hair, and every line on your face represents a story, a memory, a lesson learned. Instead of seeing aging as a decline, think of it as a journey filled with experiences that make you wiser and more resilient. The fear of aging is often linked to the fear of becoming irrelevant or less valuable. But the truth is, age adds value. It's like a well-aged wine or an old book filled with wisdom. The years don't diminish our worth. They enhance it. 
In fact, the most meaningful connections, insights, and moments often come with time. Imagine looking at yourself in the mirror, not with regret or fear, but with pride for all the years you've lived and all you've learned. Aging is not about losing beauty. It's about finding a new kind of beauty, one that comes from depth, grace, and character. Here's a question for you. What's one thing you appreciate more about yourself now than you did in your younger years? Share it in the comments below. It might just inspire someone else to see the beauty in aging. 3. The Illusion of Perfection Throughout our lives, we've been taught to aim for perfection. Whether it's being the perfect parent, spouse, or professional, society pushes us to strive for an ideal that's often unattainable. We convince ourselves that if we don't get everything right, we've somehow failed. But here's the reality. Perfection doesn't exist. It's merely an illusion that keeps us feeling frustrated and unfulfilled. Think about it. How many times have you tried to perfect a moment, a relationship, or even a meal, only to feel disappointed when it didn't turn out exactly as you imagined? The truth is, perfection is not only impossible, but it's also exhausting. It stops us from appreciating the messy, beautiful reality of life. By constantly trying to be perfect, we miss out on what's truly valuable, authentic connections, genuine moments, and real happiness. Reaching 70 gives us a unique opportunity to let go of this illusion. It's time to embrace our imperfections, our mistakes, flaws, and quirks. These imperfections make us human, relatable, and real. They show us where growth is still possible and where beauty truly lies. Life is not a perfectly scripted story. It's a collection of moments that are often unpredictable, sometimes messy, but always meaningful. Imagine how liberating it would feel to simply be yourself without the pressure of being perfect. Imagine laughing at a mistake rather than feeling embarrassed by it. Imagine finding joy in the unexpected rather than feeling disappointed by it. By letting go of perfection, we create room for acceptance, peace, and a deeper sense of self-love. Ask yourself this. What would happen if you allowed yourself to be imperfect just as you are? Could it bring you more happiness and freedom? 4. The Overwhelm of Information and Connectivity In today's world, we are more connected than ever before. We wake up, grab our phones, check emails, browse social media, and read news headlines before we even step out of bed. Information floods in from all directions, and it feels like we can't escape the constant buzz of updates, alerts, and notifications. But here's the real question. Is all this information actually helping us, or is it overwhelming us? The desire to stay connected is understandable. It makes us feel up-to-date and involved. But at the same time, this endless flow of information can become mentally exhausting. It creates a false sense of urgency, an invisible pressure that tells us we must respond to everything immediately, follow every story, and be aware of every event. But do we really need all this noise in our lives? The truth is, most of what we consume isn't urgent or even relevant to our happiness and well-being. Imagine stepping away from the screen, even if just for a moment. Imagine finding silence in a noisy world, allowing yourself to reconnect with your own thoughts. Turning off your phone, limiting your screen time, or simply choosing moments of disconnection can be incredibly refreshing. It's in these moments of quiet that we find clarity, inner peace, and a deeper sense of connection with ourselves. Here's something to reflect on. When was the last time you put your phone down and listened to your own thoughts? Could disconnecting from the world help you reconnect with yourself? It's not about abandoning technology altogether. It's about creating balance. Letting go of the need to stay constantly connected gives us the chance to focus on what really matters, our health, our loved ones, and our inner peace. Are you ready for point five? Let me know.
and I'll reveal the next life-changing idea. Holding on to old roles and labels. Throughout our lives, we play many roles. Parent, spouse, friend, professional, caregiver. These roles define who we are and give our lives structure and purpose. But as we reach 70, many of these roles change or even fade away. Kids grow up, careers shift, and relationships evolve. Despite these natural changes, we often cling to old roles long after they've served their purpose. But why do we do this? The answer is simple. These roles gave us meaning. They made us feel needed, valuable, and important. Letting go of them can feel like losing a part of ourselves. We hold on because they're familiar, comforting, and represent a past we're proud of. But at this stage of life, it's important to realize that our identity is not limited to the roles we've played. We are much more than the titles we've carried. Imagine embracing a new chapter of self-discovery. Just because you're no longer working doesn't mean you can't find new passions. Just because your children are grown doesn't mean you can't find new ways to be nurturing and kind. This stage of life is an opportunity to redefine yourself, not by what you do for others, but by who you are and who you can still become. Letting go of old roles doesn't mean losing your purpose, it means expanding it. It's about finding joy in what you want to do now, not just what you used to do. It's about exploring new interests, learning new skills, or simply enjoying the freedom that comes with fewer responsibilities. 6. Asking for help. Finding strength in vulnerability. From an early age, we're taught to be independent, strong, and self-reliant. As we grow older, this belief becomes even more ingrained. We tell ourselves, I should be able to handle everything on my own. But let's be honest, sometimes we simply can't. Whether it's a big life challenge or a simple daily task, there are moments when we need a helping hand. Yet, we hesitate, thinking that asking for help is a sign of weakness. But is it really? The truth is, reaching out for support requires courage. It's a sign of strength, not weakness. It takes bravery to admit that we can't do it all and to allow others to step in. Asking for help not only lightens our burden, but also deepens our connections with the people around us. It's a reminder that we're not alone, and it's an opportunity to let others show their love, care, and support. Think about this. By allowing someone to help, you're giving them a chance to express their kindness, just as you've done for others many times before. It's a cycle of mutual support that brings us closer to those who matter most. It's not about proving our worth through what we can handle alone. It's about acknowledging that human connections are built on shared experiences, including the challenges. Imagine how much lighter life could feel if you stopped trying to carry every burden alone. Imagine how much more joy you could experience by simply allowing others to help. Here's something to consider. Is there an area in your life where you've been struggling silently? What would happen if you reached out for help? 7. Breaking free from old routines. Routines are comforting. They bring stability, predictability, and structure to our lives. For years, these routines have served us well, helping us manage responsibilities, achieve goals, and maintain order. But as we reach 70, some routines can start feeling like rigid patterns that limit our experiences rather than enrich them. It's like following a familiar path so often that we forget there are other beautiful roads to explore. While routines give us a sense of security, it's important to ask, do they still bring us joy or are we just following them out of habit? Imagine the possibilities that open up when you break free from routines that no longer serve you. What if you decided to take a different route on your daily walk, try a new hobby, or shake up your morning routine? This stage of life offers a chance to embrace spontaneity. It's a chance to try new things, explore new passions, and create new routines that are fulfilling. 
Even small changes can bring a sense of excitement and wonder, like trying a different breakfast, visiting a new place, or starting the day with a different activity. By breaking free from old routines, we invite more joy and unpredictability into our lives. Here's a question to think about. Is there a routine you've been following for years that no longer feels meaningful? What's one small change you could make today to bring a fresh sense of joy? 8. Slowing down. The beauty of being present. For most of our lives, we've been in a hurry, rushing to meet deadlines, juggling responsibilities, and trying to fit as much as possible into each day. We often measure success by how much we get done, believing that productivity equals worth. But here's the truth. Life isn't meant to be a race. As we reach 70, we have the opportunity to slow down, embrace stillness, and truly be present. Slowing down doesn't mean doing less. It means experiencing more. It's about savoring the simple joys, like feeling the warmth of the morning sun, sipping your tea without distraction, or having a meaningful conversation without looking at the clock. It's about replacing the rush with mindful moments, where we're fully engaged with what we're doing and the people we're with. Imagine waking up without the need to rush. Imagine sitting down to a meal and truly enjoying every bite, tasting the flavors and appreciating the nourishment it brings. Slowing down allows us to find quality over quantity. It's in these unhurried moments that we discover a deeper sense of peace, joy and fulfillment. The beauty of being present is that it teaches us to appreciate life as it is, not as we wish it to be. It frees us from the constant pressure of what's next and allows us to focus on what's now. So ask yourself, when was the last time you truly slowed down and enjoyed a moment without any distractions? What could happen if you embraced a slower pace today? 9. Letting go of grudges and past hurts. Over a lifetime, we all accumulate emotional wounds, grudges, resentments, disappointments, and heartbreaks. These feelings are natural, and they often stem from unresolved conflicts or unmet expectations. But here's the hard truth. Holding on to grudges only hurts us. It's like carrying a heavy backpack full of stones, each one representing a past hurt. The longer we carry it, the heavier it becomes, weighing down our spirit and stealing our peace. Grudges can linger for years, even decades, but they rarely serve us in the long run. They keep us stuck in a cycle of pain, replaying old stories in our minds, hoping for some sense of justice or closure that never arrives. But here's the reality. Forgiveness is not about excusing what happened. It's about freeing ourselves from the burden of negative emotions. It's about taking back control over our own happiness. Imagine how much lighter life could feel if you chose to let go of just one lingering grudge today. What if you decided that the past no longer has power over your present? Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting, and it doesn't mean condoning someone's behavior. It simply means releasing the hold that hurt has on your heart, making room for new joys, deeper peace, and more meaningful connections. Think of it this way. Forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself, not to the person who hurt you. It's a way of creating space for healing, allowing love, kindness, and compassion to fill the void left by bitterness. By letting go of past hurts, you not only improve your emotional well-being, but also open the door to more fulfilling relationships. Here's a question for you to consider. Is there a grudge or past hurt that you're still holding on to? What would happen if you chose to forgive today, even if it's just a small step forward? Now that we've explored these nine ideas, it's clear that life after 70 isn't about simply adding more years. It's about adding more quality to those years. It's about finding new ways to live with joy, clarity, and peace. The reality is, we all carry certain beliefs, habits, and fears that once served us, but now weigh us down. 
The beauty of reaching this stage of life is that we have the freedom to redefine our priorities, to choose simplicity, and to let go of anything that no longer brings us fulfillment. Letting go isn't just a mental exercise. It's an act of self-care and self-love. It's about clearing space for what truly matters, meaningful connections, personal peace, and the simple joys of everyday life. Imagine waking up with a lighter heart, knowing that you've released what no longer serves you. Imagine spending your days focused on what brings you joy, rather than feeling burdened by old expectations or outdated roles. If there's one takeaway from this journey, it's this. You have the power to choose what stays in your life and what goes. It's never too late to start living intentionally, to embrace the present and to let go of the past. Every moment is an opportunity to create a life filled with more peace, love and meaning. So, What's the first thing you're going to let go of today? Share it in the comments and let us know how you plan to bring more lightness into your life. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Goha Journey for more inspiring content designed to make life better one day at a time.